So uh, Steve asks, uh, you frequently discuss using VoIP phone services. Pretty much, uh, how do we use MySudo? How do we use VoIP services in our lives? Multiple numbers for different personas, etc. <sighs> numbers are tough because it's so hard to get them and they're expensive. Even if you use VoIP services, it tends to rack up pretty quickly in terms of cost. So on my end, I've actually moved to a much more simple approach because I used to have like five, six, seven different numbers. But I realized that the when I actually broke apart the reason why I had one number over the other, it wasn't actually a very good reason. Um, and so for me, again, this is very personal preference. I think for some people, they might need a lot more numbers. I need kind of a spam number that I just give out if I'm reserving a table and they now require a number at this restaurant. It's, just, it's my spam number. I don't really care. And that's what I use my pseudo for. And then I also have a couple other VoIP numbers that I use that are more permanent. So one is my actual number that I use for people to talk with, like people I know. And then one's a business number. So I have like a personal number that I use so I don't have to use SMS through my carrier. And I have a VoIP service instead that I can communicate with people through. One's a business number and then one's a spam number. And then I just use like Signal and all these other messengers for just direct communication with people. That's all I have at this point. And it takes care of every use case I have in my life. I don't know if your workflow is different. Uh, no, I think you have pretty much the exact same workflow because I have a personal business and spam number myself. Um, it, it, it is annoying. Um, in terms of like privacy, I've pretty much just accepted that I'm not going to use most services that ask for a number in the first place. So it's kind of like limited what I sign up for, but that's been <laughs> my personal solution is just kind of avoiding that entirely for better or for worse. And that's kind of the best thing you can do because a lot of services that require a number won't accept VoIP anyway. So I do think that just trying to avoid those services in the first place really is the best move. But I will say there is one other number I have set up, which is like kind of an account number. So I don't know why, but in I feel like Google Voice numbers have been more accepted for accounts recently, like the last year or two. Because I feel like there was a time period where no service accepted Google Voice numbers, but I've been having a lot of luck with the Google Voice number. Um, and it might be because I ported it from an actual physical number. Oh, um, I think that is the case. That's how it works. Yeah, but that's really cool for services that require SMS 2FA. Now I can keep my SMS 2FA behind a more secure account instead of just relying mm -hmm. on my carrier to keep all my SMS code safe. Because that's people's really big concern is SIM card swap attacks and SIM swap attacks. And so if you have that behind a Google account, I, that's pretty much SIM swap proof in my head. Um, I don't know how they'd be able to get do that unless they broke into your Google account. So it, that's kind of a fourth number I have access to if I need a phone number for an account. But I'm with Jonah, you just don't open those accounts at all costs unless it's like a bank. Thanks for watching this TechLurk clip. This is actually a clipped version of a full length video that talks about this topic a lot more thoroughly. So if you wanna check out a lot more digital rights content, check out the main TechLurk channel and we'll see you over there.